Glenn Bryan here with Astrolips 2000 and welcome to my channel. Uh, tonight I'm going to bring you guys a video on shooting the Pac-Man Nebula in SHO using the ASI Air Plus. I just wanted to make this video to show you guys how easy it is and simple it is to get set up and rolling with the ASI Air. Uh, looking like clear skies. So go in and get my stuff ready it's acclimating out in my garage right now so let's go take a look and see what we're going to be shooting with okay tonight i have the explore scientific ed102 apo refractor and it's accompanied with the zwo uh, asi 2600 mm which is the mono camera and i'm using the seven position filter wheel with the astronomic uh, seven nanometer filters and the astronomic deep sky LRGB filters as well. And I use the ASI Air Plus to power the rig, which will be riding on the AM5. So I'm going to get these uh, outside and set up and get you guys back and show you how simple it is to get up and get going with the ASI Air Plus. Okay, see you guys shortly. I have the telescope all set up, I have it powered on, I have the tablet which I use to control the telescope. You can use your cell phone, which works just as good, but I had this old tablet laying around, so I figured why not use this. Uh, depending on what you do use, uh, your tablet does have to have at least four gigs of RAM to control the ASI Air, so I figured that was worth mentioning. Okay, so let's just dive in here and show you guys what I do to get uh, my setup going. I already connected to the Wi-Fi, so all I'm gonna do is hop into the app here. Hopefully, First thing you'd want to do is um, get focus on your camera. Mine is already focused because I shot with this last night, so I don't have to refocus now. I will do it before I shoot my target. Also, if you do have to uh, focus your um, guide scope, a little trick is when you first get into the app, don't connect to your main camera right away. Connect to the guide scope as your main camera, and you can have a little batten off mask, and you can focus your guide camera that way it makes it much easier and then when you're done focusing your guide camera you disconnect from the guide cam and then reconnect to your main camera in the app and it, again it just makes focusing your uh, guide camera much easier everything's connected the first thing i will do is come in here and turn on the cooler and the uh, dew heater on the camera itself i cool down to zero degrees celsius and once it gets to that point then i'll bring it down to negative 10 for the night so that's all set now, next thing I want to do is, again, you would want to probably focus now, but that's already close enough to focus that I'd rather have it guiding when I uh, focus with the HA filter because it has to take a, a longer exposure. Okay, so I'm going to go into the polar alignment, click the play button, it's going to take an image and plate solve. Plate solved in three seconds. Sweet. Okay, now it's going to rotate the axis 60 degrees and take another image. Hopefully it's not too far off. Let's go. Ouch. Okay, so let's get this and hopefully it doesn't take too long. Like I said, I've had it closer, I've had it further in the past, and it didn't really seem to affect the guide, and it still guides around the same. So I'm going to go back to preview here, and we're going to want to go and get to our target. So we're going to go into the Sweet Sky Atlas they give us here. And we're going to go into my previously searched object, which is Pac-Man. We want to click Center and then go to and the mount is now slowing to the target
pretty low in the sky right now. So we'll see how the guiding looks and probably get much better as the night goes on. And again, I love how it shows you this little box to show you the rotation of the camera so you can make sure that you have your target framed perfectly. Awesome. Target is centered. So now we can get out of the Sky Atlas. Now I'm going to come into the guiding. And I always uh, clear the calibration. And I always have a hard time clicking that button. Okay, so let's start looping the expo exposure. And then we'll start guiding and let it calibrate. You guys see the moon right here? Okay, so guiding is all set. We're going to let that settle down a little bit. And then while that's settling down, I'm going to come up here and switch to the hydrogen alpha filter. And we're going to focus. Now for focusing, I use the autofocus. I have it set to autofocus every hour and then also autofocus after one degree uh, Celsius change in temperature. And that keeps your images nice and crisp. And the autofocus coming, um, autofocus switching to this, I had no issues. The, the regular settings in here work just fine. I got like a nice V curve out of it and I checked it multiple times with a uh, uh, batten off mask to make sure it works and it's always spot on so it's reassuring okay so let's just get through the autofocus and then we'll be back to set up the auto run Is it done? Normally the V-curve looks much better than that, but that's because I this was the first time I focused with this filter after shooting oxygen last. So I'm sure the next autofocus run will have a much smoother V-curve to it. So for now, let's get out of here. And okay, so we're guiding. Okay, that's gonna a little shaky usually like that after the autofocus and it will settle down. Or it could be that it's because it's early in the night and my target is pretty low. But that's usually pretty common. It will settle down a little bit here. Okay, so now that we're done there, let's go to the auto run, which is how you set up your plans for shooting for the night. Um, so this is pretty cool. I uh, So let's go in here and set this up. So I can clear this. I'm going to come in. I already have one. Uh, we'll make a new one here. So we're going to make it a light, be 300 second long exposure. We're going to want to make this the hydrogen filter and we're going to want to take uh, all night. So 150 of them should cover it. And click OK. And then if you look down here at the bottom, it's going to give you your estimated time and when you're going to hit your um, meridian flip. So what do I have on over here? Return to home position, shut down the SIR. I don't ever do that because I'm going to want to shoot flats tonight when I come out. So now that we're all set here, now we can see that guiding has settled down. Guiding pretty nicely. Um, in my last video, actually some people did comment on my numbers for guiding and I didn't think this was anything special and compared to what I see to other people have online. Uh, but one trick that you can try is I had another setup that I had a 30 millimeter guide scope and the other one had a 50 millimeter guide scope 
And once I put a 50 millimeter guide scope on both setups, the guiding was much better. So it might be uh, worth trying. So now we're all set and we are ready to start shooting. Typically, I could see the Pac-Man actually pretty good here. Um, before I do the auto run, I typically come in here to preview and I will run one exposure at the exact length and I'm gonna shoot my target for that night to make sure the framing is all good before I, um, you know, trust this thing or let it go to shooting. So let's just get that going. And I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed the setup video. It's, I'm not sure how long it took me, maybe 10 minutes. I can, we can look at the exact number from when I started to when I finished. Um, I'm going to shoot and then when I come back out, I'll bring you guys back out here uh, in the morning. Hey everyone, good morning. We're back. Uh, good night, Imaging. We managed to collect uh, roughly 100 images. Oh, let me get back into the app. So it's the morning, ready to shoot some flats. I just use a LED trace panel I got. I can leave a link below. You guys are interested um, I just put it on half power and it works great I'm able to use it for all my flats for luminance RGB SH and O okay so I got the app open uh, what we're gonna want to do is we go into auto run just like we did earlier to set the session up <clears throat> and you can set them up for the flats oh, can I reset my progress here and they may have already, I already have them set up. I have a flat for oxygen, sulfur, and oxygen, um, hydrogen. Sorry, I'm tired. All right, so if you open it up, you can see at the top the type of sequence, the exposure. You just set it to auto. Global gain, I just do 20. And what I'm going to do is run the flats for all the filters. Pretty sure I took them already on hydrogen alpha, but um, I'll take them again. So we'll just leave that all set up the way it is and come back out to the main screen and click the start button. And then it will go through and figure out the uh, correct exposure time for each filter. So it works really nice. I had a feature like this in APT, Astrophotography Tools, and it would cycle through the filters, find the correct exposure and ADU for um, your type of camera, and give you the correct exposure time for the flats. This is uh, something very similar, so I just figured I'd mention that in case you know, anyone was thinking about switching over to the ASI Air, that um, the feature worked. Uh, much easier than I anticipated. That was one of the things I was worried about because shooting flats was so easy in APT. Uh, just as easy in the with the ASI Air. And then you can see our first flat comes through, looks good. And we'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, now this is done. Um, you know, I, I shoot a night per filter, then I run it through uh, Pix Insight. I blink each image and then run it through the subframe selector and then you know you pick the best images and with a whole night of shooting on each filter you can uh, you have a lot to pick from so let's get inside and I'm gonna start uh, well I'm gonna go to bed and then we'll get the process in this and see how the final image turns out All right, thanks everyone